Wow we're just gonna keep on going let's begin part 6. End of the arc chapter 11. The first great step of the S-E-K-I-R-Y-U-U-T-E-I. -E Good. Tiamat would say to herself, pouring over the crimson armor. She would fix her gaze on her Issei's eyes, making the brunette look at her carefully. Let's have a little sparring with this new power you've acquired. The dragon would comment, getting into a combat pose. I'll use exactly the same amount of power that I've been using so far so you can see the difference. Issei just nodded to her words, imitating Tiamat's pose. Tiamat pounced on Issei without warning, making the brunette grit his teeth slightly. Even so, he looked totally surprised when his teacher's movements were easily distinguished by her sight. Consequently, Issei blocked the first punch dead, causing a large blizzard to rise through the place. The brown-haired man still continued with his surprised look, while Tiamat gave him a small bold smile after what he witnessed. Tiamat gave a small jump back and continued giving her various punches and kicks that Issei blocked or dodged without much difficulty. What is this? Movements that I could barely see before are now, normal to me. Issei would think with some surprise, while her eyes followed the attacks without any problem, at the same time that her body responded with great lightness, blocking and dodging them. It's not just that. The brown-haired man would think, catching a kick that went straight to his chest, causing the wave of small blizzards caused by speed to end with a bang. I can also parry the blows without the biggest problem, since before they seemed almost unstoppable. A somewhat macabre smile appeared on Issei's face, making Tiamat look at him strangely. In that case, Issei further tightened his grip on Tiamat's foot, making her eyes widen slightly, followed by that. After that shock, Issei reacted quickly and tried to hit him in the face. Seeing this, a small mocking smile shot across Tiamat's face. Do you really think he can catch up with me? He thought to himself, breaking Issei's hold with great ease, using Issei's hand as momentum, doing a big somersault in the air and landing on his back to the brunette, making Issei blink in surprise. Even so, the brunette couldn't control the great amount of force he used in the blow, so he was dragged by his arm. Tiamat looked over his shoulder with a slightly amused expression as Issei staggered forward, about to fall. Finally, the brunette continued to stagger forward while shouting. His scream sharpened even more when he saw that Tiamat's behind was getting closer and closer to his face. A small rumble was heard, so that after a short second a scream was heard. Hump ah! Tilda! Tiamat's pleasurable gasp was heard from all around as Issei's fist sank deep into her voluptuous behind. Issei fell to the ground after that, huh he immediately bowed low to her. I'm sorry, she yelled, looking up from her to see the deep blush that she had on her face. She had seen a lot of dirty things in her life, so she knew a scream from a moan pretty easily. All right, he quickly answered Tiamat, covering his rear and turning around quickly, making Issei see a blush on his face for the first time. It was an accident, and Tiamat would look away from him in shame. It's not your fault that place is so sensitive, he would mutter under his breath, but it would still be audible enough for Issei to hear. The awkward moment didn't last too long, as Issei's armor broke into a thousand pieces. That, Issei wondered aloud, getting up immediately and looking at her body in confusion. What happened? Tiamat asked, looking at him curiously. Before Issei could reply, he felt his body go limp out of nowhere, causing him to stumble forward. Luckily for him, Tiamat caught him in a warm embrace. Are you okay? Asked the dragon, with clear concern in her words. Yeah, it's just, I feel weak. The brown-haired man answered, looking at his hand with confusion. It's normal. Hearing Diedrag's voice, Tiamat and Issei separated to listen carefully. It's your first time reaching this form, and the physical exhaustion is overwhelming. From what I see, you'll have to train your physique for a while longer to extend the use of balance breaker without exhausting yourself. Issei blinked in disbelief. Extend duration. But I only held it for a minute. That's your limit at the moment. You'll have to get a little stronger and get used to balance breaker to be able to use it for longer. How long would it take me? You've already accomplished the most difficult thing, but even so, you don't have enough time to control the balance breaker. I must also tell you that not everything consists of brute force. It won't be long now before you will be forced to study your sacred gear to continue going forward. Keep going. Issei wondered curiously. This is bad. 
Tiamat's words would interrupt Diedrag's response. With just one minute of use, it will be very difficult for you to defeat an opponent with such skill. The dragon would be with her hand on her chin, thinking of a solution. That can be easily fixed. No. It would be Tiamat's simple sharp reply that he would instantly silence Diedrag. Issei just looked at her in amazement at her imposing expression. Finally, the dragon would give a great sigh of exhaustion. We'll think of something tomorrow. For now let's go to sleep, it's already late. Issei just nodded with a smile, agreeing with the dragon. Line jump. Tiamat jerked awake feeling strange, as if something was missing. Issei. The dragon asked, looking around the entire cave, to see that it was totally empty. Her gaze finally settled on the exit, causing her to widen her eyes in horror as she saw a great crimson glow. No, Tiamat thought in terror, desperately getting up and disappearing in less than a heartbeat because of her monstrous speed. He crossed all the trees with absurd speed, reaching Issei in less than a second. Issei. He screamed loudly, watching as his right arm was completely covered in blood while he gasped in a completely abnormal way. Issei looked up, to give her a pained smile. Tiamat. I'm sorry to wake you up because of that intense brightness. Before he could realize it, the dragon had hugged him tightly, making the brown-haired man surprised by such a sudden gesture. I told you not to do it. The dragon recriminated her, cupping her face in Issei's neck. Issei responded to the hug, feeling how Tiamat clung to him even more after that action. I'm sorry, but it was the only way. The moment did not last long, as Tiamat broke away abruptly, taking the arm that held Diedrag's soul, or what was left of his soul. You stupid jerk, you fucking idiot underdeveloped lizard. He yelled the dragon with great rage, while she shook Issei's bleeding hand with force. I wasn't that angry even when we met. Issei would think with his eyes rolling, after hearing the large amount of bad words that came from such beautiful lips. Calm down, you crazy bitch. Just replace Issei's arm with a dragon's. I would never replace his entire body, knowing the obvious result. Diedrag would yell. Again, Issei rolled his eyes at hearing the voice of her partner. He was also sure that he had never heard him so angry. I don't care. You know very well that just by replacing a body part, I could have died. Shouted Tiamat, swinging the arm with even more force. Do you seriously think I would have done it, taking such a risk? Tiamat stopped instantly, completely taken aback by what Diedrag had said, and the penetrating tone he had used. I am inside him, I was with him the longest, and I am the one who understands the sacred gear the most out of the three of us even though my knowledge is basic. Those three reasons are more than enough to take the risk, knowing the boy's body. Tiamat raised an eyebrow at this. And that has to do. The balance breaker takes more training to release, and my partner managed to wake him up early. Having the records of the improvements he got in the gauntlet from his first fight, there is also something that doesn't add up. After spending so much time with him, note that he has a much greater compatibility with dragons than normal. That his arm has not been corroded by power is proof of that. Tiamat looked quite impressed at the bleeding arm she was holding. It's true. He can control the power of dragons quite well, despite being a devil. Tiamat blinked in confusion. But how is that possible? Asterisk as I said before, he has a great compatibility with dragons. That is, his body has nothing to do with it, but his soul does. Another example I could give is when for a moment he acquired the sense of smell of a dragon, tracking your aura when I first came to the familiar kingdom, when I had just started wielding the boosted gear. After hearing Diedrag's explanation, Tiamat released her arm as she looked at Issei with slightly widened eyes. He didn't know that the chestnut had such an affinity with his species. Although it wasn't a bad thing. In fact, she was strangely glad that it was so. Diedrag. There's still something you haven't explained to me. Issei would comment, making the dragon listen carefully. I know replacing one arm with another already sounds painful. But why are you at such a risk of dying? Issei asked with great doubt. As you said before, the power and blood of a dragon is very corrosive to anyone. I answer Tiamat for Diedrag. That's why I didn't want you to do it. Keep in mind that countless people have tried to transform into dragons with different methods. Tiamat looked Issei straight in the eye. All died. Issei blinked in shock at what he heard. That. Rant. Tiamat raised her gaze to the night sky. Well, not all. There was one that survived the procedure. 
Oh really? Issei asked. Very interested in the subject. Tiamat looked down at him, giving him a very small smile. That's right. Although right now, he is locked in a dimensional prison. So I guess he wasn't someone very good. Issei would think to himself, wondering what a dimensional prison would look like from the inside. Issei came out of his thoughts when he felt how delicate hands encircled his waist, so that he would later see himself resting on Tiamat's back. Anyway, let's go back to bed. Tomorrow I have to explain the victory plan to you. She commented the dragon with a small smile for feeling how Issei's heat began to invade her body again. Issei settled on Tiamat's back and wrapped his arms around her neck. I agree. She would answer the brunette, giving a big yawn as she rested her head on Tiamat's shoulder. Seeing this, the dragon affectionately rubbed her cheek against his, before beginning to walk calmly. Line jump. Listen carefully. Tiamat would order, being inside the blankets along with Issei due to the cold that was that day. Without a doubt, that demon's ability will be very problematic. But he has several weak points that are due to a common point, and that point is his species. Tiamat's words would disorient Issei. Being a demon, she possesses many weaknesses that cannot be hidden behind her immortality. For example, divine weapons, divine magic, anything related to God. Tiamat would wave her hand dismissively, indicating that the above points they weren't very important. The magical reserves. Tiamat stared at him, indicating that this was the point they were going to focus on. From what you told me, that razor guy needs a certain amount of magic to heal his wounds, depending on how big they are. After a rather serious explanation, Tiamat finally gives him a small smile. You have to exhaust all his magical reserves to win him. You will achieve a victory by knockout or mental break due to the loss of magic. Issei rubbed his hair skeptically. I don't know, it sounds complicated. As far as I remember, Razor had a fair amount of magic. I don't think he could force him to use it all up in such a short time. Issei blinked twice after remembering something important. By the way, how much time has been extended, Diedrig? Considering that you were very exhausted yesterday, and the transformation of your arm, I'd say about three minutes. It will be enough. Tiamat's answer made Issei look at her in surprise. Do you remember what you said about Razor freaking out after receiving your dragon shot? That's because he's never been in a real battle before, and he must have felt a bit scared. From what I understand, Razor participated in various raiding games. That's not a real fight. The dragon would answer seriously. By real fight, I mean endangering your life. Either you die, or he dies. Raiding games are nothing more than games. It's more than obvious that guy didn't have a real fight in his life if he got desperate for an attack that was far from killing him thanks to his immortality. Issei would nod seriously. I get it. You want me to use that card to my advantage, right? That's how it is. Tiamat would answer with satisfaction when she saw that his apprentice had caught it quickly. To achieve that, you have to plant the seeds of despair, both in her mind and in her heart. For that, Tiamat would jump up, her gaze turning icy as a very imposing and terrifying aura surrounded her from above, completely, causing Issei to freak out a bit. The physical damage you deal to him should be at the level of his psychological damage. Make sure you have a threatening posture at all times. If you have to say a few words, say just enough to sink him. Do you understand? Issei nodded repeatedly with a bit of fear when he saw the threatening figure of Tiamat. In that case, his face changed to the usual one. That's all. Issei would look at his hand seriously. I understand. Would be the brown-haired simple words while his hand turned into a fist. Tiamat watched this with some interest, for he noted a hint of doubt in his apprentice's eyes. What a bad weather. The dragon would say with contempt, rubbing against the cold. She watched the snow fall with a grim look on her face. Issei caught this right away, so he decided to ask her. Don't you get along with snow? The brunette surrounded Tiamat in the warm blankets, causing the dragon to heave a small sigh of relief as she took advantage of the situation to cling to the chestnut's body. It's something personal. It doesn't bring back good memories. Tiamat clung to Issei's arm, then looked at him carefully. Perhaps this day we will lose it due to time. Issei rubbed his cheek with a smile at what he heard. Actually, I was thinking of putting training aside these last two days. I already achieved the goal I wanted to reach, and the truth is that I would like to spend time with you. 
Would you like that? Issei looked surprised when he felt Tiamat wrap her arms around him. If that had not served as an answer, the sweet smile prevailing on Tiamat's face was enough to clear it up. I guess I can take that as a yes. Issei commented, returning the smile. Line jump. Issei would fall flat to the ground when he received a strong snowball in the face. Damned. The brunette exclaimed, jumping up with a mischievous smile on his face. The little dragon just laughed at her reaction, as she dodged a large amount of snowballs, courtesy of Issei. That pitched battle ended abruptly when they both received a strong snowball to the face, causing both of them to look where the attack came from, to see how the dragon's father was juggling more than 30 balls at the same time. Seeing this, they both widened their eyes, completely impressed. Withdrawal. Issei yelled, being followed by the dragon's scream. They both ran and threw themselves behind the nearest tree to avoid the rain of snow that was unleashed against them. Tiamat would be watching everything from inside the cave together with the mother of the dragon. She was attentively watching all the events. After a few seconds, she looked up from her to the sky to see how the snow was slowly falling. Since the dragonfall happened to me, I see the snow in a different way. Those little flakes that fall slowly until they reach the ground, with that silence that makes them inaudible. A melancholy look would cross Tiamat's eyes when she had a small flashback of her kneeling in a cave as tears fell from her face. She was crying completely silently, thinking about what she had done to deserve all of this. She loved him, but that guy only saw her as a trophy. She herself heard that her ex-fiancé had said that no one would marry a woman as crazy as her, and for that very reason it was very easy to cajole her, because the only attraction she had about her was her physique. She said that her ass and her breasts were the only salvageable thing she had of her, and for that very reason no one would fall in love with her. He was a monster among dragons, someone who didn't deserve to have such overwhelming power as he was. A monster. Monster. Those words were repeated incessantly in his head, causing his chest to burn with pain, and his mind to go completely blank due to the enormous emptiness he felt in his stomach, to the point of comparing himself to a huge black hole where only they could fit negative emotions. They always remind me of my tears, the only time I cried. A long time has passed since then, but I can't forget how devastated I was that day. Tiamat would close her eyes when a snowflake fell on his nose. It was snowing that day too, exactly as calmly as now. Tiamat under his gaze, to observe with a small smile how Issei was having a great time. But now it's different. She would raise her gaze again, seeing with a joyful shine in her eyes how the snowflakes fell slowly, while Issei's voice and the roars of the dragons decorated the environment. Now, now when it snows, it makes everything around me feel so warm, so familiar, so nice. I don't know why, but I don't care to know either. I just want to enjoy this moment. I want to enjoy it with them. I want to enjoy it with him. Just as she finished thinking, a snowball hit her face. Tiamat slowly removed the snow globe with a scowl on his face, to see how Issei was playing with a snow globe. She would raise her gaze again, seeing with a happy shine in her eyes how the snowflakes fell slowly, while Issei's voice and the roars of the dragons decorated the environment. Now, now when snow falls, it makes everything around mine feel so warm, so familiar, so nice. I don't know why, but I don't care to know either. I just want to enjoy this moment. I want to enjoy it with them. I want to enjoy it with him. Just as she finished thinking, a snowball hit her face. Tiamat slowly removed the snowball with a scowl on her face, to see how Issei was playing with a snowball. She would raise her gaze again, seeing with a happy shine in her eyes how the snowflakes fell slowly, while Issei's voice and the roars of the dragons decorated the environment. Now, now when snow falls, it makes everything around mine feel so warm so familiar, so nice. I don't know why, but I don't care to know either. I just want to enjoy this moment. I want to enjoy it with them. I want to enjoy it with him. Just as she finished thinking, a snowball hit her face. Tiamat slowly removed the snowball with a scowl on her face, to see how Issei was playing with a snowball, while Issei's voice and the roars of the dragons decorated the environment. Now, now when it snows, it makes everything around me feel so warm so familiar, so nice. I don't know why, but I don't care to know either. I just want to enjoy this moment. I want to enjoy it with them. I want to 
Enjoy it with him. Just as I finished thinking, a snowball hit her face. Tiamat slowly removed the snow globe with a scowl on his face, to see how Issei was playing with a snow globe, while Issei's voice and the roars of the dragons decorated the environment. Now, now when it snows, it makes everything around me feel so warm, so familiar, so nice. I don't know why, but I don't care to know either. I just want to enjoy this moment. I want to enjoy it with them. I want to enjoy it with him. Just as I finished thinking, a snowball hit her face. Tiamat slowly removed the snow globe with a scowl on his face, to see how Issei was playing with a snow globe. Do you want to play? Issei asked, to then sharpen her smile. Rather, do you want to take revenge? After hearing Issei's words, a predatory smile decorated Tiamat's face, causing the brunette to immediately become alert. Tiamat soon burst out of the cave, creating a huge amount of snowballs with her magical affinity, making Issei blink in disbelief. He quickly moved behind a tree, covering his face from it as he heard a huge flock of snowballs crash into the trunk. When he didn't hear any more, he came out of hiding from him, without first preparing a few snowballs. Issei observed with some surprise how Tiamat was relatively close to his position, so they both began to throw a large number of snowballs at each other although with much more gentleness than the previous time as they ran in a circle between them, until finally it passed. Ellipsis. Ha ha ha. Issei stopped dead when he heard Tiamat laugh. She had a huge smile on her face as she laughed with an angelic voice. Issei couldn't help but blush when he heard that melodious laugh, along with the beautiful smile that decorated his face. All that focus gave a completely beautiful glow to her face, which did not go unnoticed by the brunette. It's true. I had heard her laugh before, but that case was too punctual cough, cough. Teasing Deidre cough, cough. Asterisk. Instead, she was now laughing just because she was playing snowball throwing. As Issei was distracted, he received a heavy snowball to the face courtesy of Tiamat, causing him to stagger backwards. Tiamat's expression quickly changed to a worried one as she saw that Issei was about to fall. Careful. The dragon exclaimed grabbing her arm in an attempt to hold him upright. Unfortunately, they both fell for this. Issei felt an extra weight on him. That doubt was quickly answered when he felt how a warm hand brushed the snow from his face, causing a small blush to shoot up on his face instantly. Tiamat was above her, still with that smile on her face that made her so beautiful. Her face was only a few centimeters away from touching his, causing her to feel how the warm and slightly accelerated breath hit her lips. Issei would have continued looking at her for a longer time, if he hadn't caught out of the corner of his eye how an unidentified white object was heading straight for Tiamat's face. Careful, Issei exclaimed, taking her firmly from her waist, causing a small blush to decorate Tiamat's face when she felt the chestnut's firm and warm grip. Issei rolled over, receiving the snowball in Tiamat's place, though instead of hitting his face, it hit his shoulder. Still, he had something else to worry about right now. Thank you, Tiamat declared, feeling how his chest was beginning to burn with enormous warmth. But unlike the other time, it was a warmth that enveloped her completely. And the most likely is that she was due to how her noses were in contact, together with Issei's grip on her hips, and adding that now she was the one who supported all of Issei's weight on top of her body. Her, and it wasn't bad at all. No problem, Issei answered, not finding enough strength to break away from Tiamat. For some strange reason, he felt incredibly attracted to those beautiful cold blue eyes that, curiously, gave off an enormous amount of comfort and warmth that were directed only towards him, and he felt incredible. It's as if his gaze was calling him. He was telling her that he needed him right now, in this very place. And that vision was not very wrong, since Tiamat let him know in a subtle way. Are you comfortable? The dragon asked with an amused tone in her voice causing a huge blush to shoot up on Issei's face, not only because of her words, but also because of how her hands went around Issei's back, enclosing him in a deep hug and making their torsos much more in contact. Long story short, she could feel her large padded breasts pressing hard against her chest. Before Issei could reply with a, sorry, resounding, a snowball hit him hard in the face, causing him to roll to Tiamat's side. Tiamat looked in the direction of the little dragon who was laughing loudly, while her parents patted each other's faces in disapproval. The dragon queen felt somewhat strange as Issei stepped away from her body. 
She wasn't sure what it was. But, if she could explain it with a feeling, it would be disappointment. Why should I be disappointed? She thought, frowning slightly. She looked up at the snow to see that her hair was completely scattered in it, causing her to sigh. He would have to give it a good shake to make sure it was free of snow. Line jump. Today it was harder than usual to find food. Issei commented with a big tired sigh at the end, observing how the dragon mother was accompanying him in the dark night with some fruits in her hand. Luckily, it had already stopped snowing, so it made things a bit easier. Issei blinked twice as he remembered something extremely important. Tomorrow is the last day. What could I do? Issei would wonder while he positioned his hand to his chin, to then look at the dragon breast carefully. Wait. You guys are like family, aren't you? The aforementioned observed him curiously, nodding. Does that mean they can also use magic circles to move from one place to another? She nodded again, causing a small smile to shoot across Issei's face. I need to ask you a favor. Hearing her words, the dragon mother looked at him carefully. Line jump. In this last month, Tiamat managed to sleep totally August, despite not using her magic to cover herself. All this was thanks to Issei, since her heat gave him an impressive well-being, added to the blankets that surrounded them because they helped even more to capture the heat and smell of Issei. Being a dragon, her nose was very sensitive, so being able to smell Issei meant a lot more than she seemed. Even so, today it felt especially hot. It was kind of strange, since they were in the middle of nowhere, facing a winter that was scorching. In fact, it is for that very reason that she began to wake up. She slowly opened her eyes, and as always, she was snuggled into Issei's body as she had. Her face colliding with the brunettes, her hair scattered all over the mattress, giving her an incredibly pretty appearance. Wait a second. Mattress. Tiamat poked half of her face above the blankets, completely stunned by what she was seeing. It was a room. To be specific, a human habitation. It was full of photos of two people she didn't know, adding to the typical things that were in a double bedroom. She rolled her precious icy blue eyes in all directions, studying the place. She wasn't scared oh on alert as Issei was next to her. It took her a few seconds to realize that said bedroom looked suspiciously familiar. Quote dot dot dot. Isn't this the room that was on the first floor where Issei lived? The woman wondered inwardly, her eyes slightly widening. How the hell did we get to this place? Have you woken up yet? Issei showed her face through the blanket, giving her a toothy smile. How did we get here? The dragon asked quickly, looking at him in genuine surprise. Issei only increased his smile even more after hearing the question. When you were asleep, we moved to this place thanks to our little friends. I hope you like the surprise. How was it possible that you could move me from one place to another without me noticing? Issei rubbed his hair with his smile still in effect. I just carried you in my arms. You were so asleep that you didn't realize it. You just murmured something and hugged me tightly. Upon hearing Issei's response, Tiamat hid her face in the blankets again so she wouldn't see the small blush that had formed on her cheeks. Because, Issei looked at her with some confusion at her attitude, which was instantly dispelled. Today I plan to fulfill the promise I made you a month ago. Hearing this, Tiamat flung off the covers in one swift motion, impressing Issei. Shall we go out to eat? The dragon asked with her typical expression although the sparkle of emotion that was present in both of her eyes indicated that she was happy. Exactly. I already have the park where we're going. We just need to bring my barbecue, some meat and that's it. Issei would answer with a big smile on her face. Barbecue. The dragon wondered aloud. There is no other device that cooks meat better than a barbecue. Issei exclaimed, holding up her thumb. Seeing this, Tiamat only responded with a small smile on her face. First. You have to prepare. She exclaimed again, jumping out of bed. The first thing Issei did when he got up was to go to the kitchen and look at his cell phone. Forty missed calls. The chestnut wondered incredulously. Who could have called him so many times, considering that his fellow club members don't have his number? The answer came instantly. Matsuda. Motohama. Matsuda. Motohama. Matsuda. Motohama. Issei muttered under his breath as he had a blank expression on his face. Finally, he closed his cell phone and took a deep breath. When we meet again, I'll have to come up with a perfect excuse. She thought the brunette, rubbing her head in frustration. Everything is ready. 
Issei turned to see Tiamat. She had a backpack on her back, and her typical white outfit, a bit tight that highlighted her beautiful figure. Then let's not waste any more time. Issei exclaimed excitedly, making Tiamat nod with a small smile. Somehow, Issei had conveyed all of his emotion to her. Oh rather, she was just so glad to be able to go out to eat with him, and have a pretty nice comfortable time alone. Issei felt the same way as Tiamat, although he also had other reasons to be so excited, since he had only done this with his two friends. Doing it with a company as nice and beautiful as Tiamat was, added many more points. Line jump. During the journey to buy food, Tiamat looked from one place to another, somewhat impressed. He had never seen the new way of living that humans had, since he had isolated himself for two millennia. He found it fascinating that each one goes on his own, the structure of the buildings seemed fascinating to him, the cars seemed fascinating to him, absolutely everything he saw seemed fascinating to him. But, thanks to her neutral and serious personality, those emotions could only be distinguished by Issei himself, who already knew her quite well. They had lived for a month together, after all. Finally, they both arrived at the park that Issei had used for the purpose of training the last time he was there, but now the purpose was completely different. Issei and Tiamat were sitting in the middle of the park, on top of a square blanket that served as a kind of picnic. They were both watching intently as the food was being made. Issei more than anything to make sure he didn't ruin anything, while Tiamat couldn't resist the fabulous aroma coming off the grill. Issei averted his gaze to see Tiamat's completely emotionless face, something very common for her. He admired her for several seconds, being completely stunned by the great beauty that her hair, her face, her eyes, her body, her skin gave off. Our date. When did you take me to various places? You know what? It was so hard to pretend I was having a good time ha 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 ha. It was totally boring. And then you wonder why no woman notices you. Do not make me laugh. Rainer's words hit Issei's head, causing him to lower his head and grit his teeth, feeling a small sting in his chest. Why do I remember that now? He cursed himself at the thought of him. Something wrong. Issei looked up from her quickly upon hearing Tiamat's worried tone. He didn't want her to worry about such trivial matters. Still, he couldn't help but ask the question. Issei looked down regretfully and rubbed his cheek. Are you having fun? Tiamat blinked in confusion upon hearing the question. Not hearing an answer, Issei assumed what she was thinking without even looking at her face. Sorry. I made it sound like a cool thing at the time, but I guess there's nothing special about eating out. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I got your hopes up for nothing. Issei yelled, squeezing her eyes shut. Who made you think that? Issei abruptly opened his eyes and looked at Tiamat's serious expression. Finally, Issei's shocked expression quickly softened. You realized? He asked, a bit embarrassed, and then lowered his head with some pain that did not go unnoticed by Tiamat. Do you remember that I had a girlfriend? Well, she told me that everything about me was completely boring, and for that very reason women don't like spending time with me. There was a rather uncomfortable silence for Issei which made him clench his fists in the discomfort of the moment. After a few seconds, a smile spread across Tiamat's face and she took Issei's hand, causing the brunette to look at her in surprise. The dragon didn't say a single word. She only began to approach him slowly while using the chestnut's arm to encircle her waist, until she finally supported her body on him and affectionately rubbed her cheek against Issei's, making him chestnut blushes. Tiamat, Issei asked with his blush still in force not understanding why Tiamat had supported her face with his after the affectionate caresses he received from her. Perhaps she is right. Women may find you boring. But first of all, I am a dragon, I am a warrior, I am a bloodthirsty. Lastly, I am a woman too, but that is the last priority in all the list of things that I am. So, you have to believe me when I tell you that this is a lot of fun. Why? Because dragons don't usually have these kinds of outings, it's something totally new to me, Tiamat snuggled up. A little more. In Issei, leaning her face on the brunette's shoulder so that he could see the sweet smile that was in effect on her face. Something new, which is very nice and fun. I'm sure that's because I'm experiencing it with you. Hearing his explanation, the painful pinch he felt in his chest was replaced by thousands of emotions spinning at a rapid speed in his chest, making him feel very warm in that place. A warmth that overwhelmed him, in a good way. 
Since his body reacted like that, he couldn't help but feel honored by the dragon. Are you serious? I I wouldn't consider myself that important. Issei would answer, rubbing his hair in embarrassment, while her face still remained a faint reddish color. You don't need to remember the words of that woman, I can assure you that she has no idea of love if I manipulate you like that. Issei just nodded seriously, agreeing with Tiamat's words. Just focus on what you were thinking earlier. Tiamat concluded, even with her sweet smile in force on his beautiful face. Issei nodded resolutely, he wasn't going to let Rainer ruin his day. Okay. The brown-haired man put a hand to his chin, thinking carefully. What was he thinking? Issei snapped his fingers with a smile on his face. Right. I was just admiring your figure. Tiamat blinked in slight surprise as a blush shot across his face. You have the great beauty that comes from your hair, your face, your eyes, your body, your skin, your smile, your attitude, your way of being. Basically, your entire body and personality fit perfectly, making you the most beautiful woman I have ever met. As she finished her speech, Issei stirred slightly as she felt Tiamat's breasts press hard against the side of her torso, feeling how her body was much closer to his while receiving a strong hug around his waist. When he tried to see Tiamat's face, he found that she had buried her face in the small cavity between the chestnut's neck and shoulder. Don't you like it when they talk about your appearance? Issei wondered with a raised eyebrow, not knowing that the dragon's reaction was due to her heart pounding, followed by great warmth filling the pit of her stomach and her chest, making her body a mess of heat. Feelings right now, that even his mind couldn't fully process. And all that was generated just by a few simple words. Oh, the meat, Issei exclaimed, separating from Tiamat. What's happening to me? Tiamat wondered, putting a hand to his chest out of sheer instinct. It's kind of like when I was in love, but now it's much stronger. He thought to himself, taking his other hand to his chest as he looked at Issei unable to take his eyes off her. Issei's words hit her mind again, making her body shake from the warmth that those emotions so strange to her transmitted to her. A completely yearning sigh escaped from her beautiful lips as he was accompanied by her desire-filled gaze. Luckily for her, Issei was too focused on the meat to listen to her. She continued to look at him throughout, until she finally felt strong enough to ask a question in her mind. I am beautiful. That's right. She found it unbelievable that someone would tell her she's beautiful, after the words she heard coming out of her ex-fiancé's mouth so long ago. Line jump. Issei would sit in the tub, stretching out his body in pleasure. Although the natural hot springs found in the family kingdom are very comfortable, there is no better place than your own bathtub. Her body was surrounded by a small towel that was responsible for covering her manhood. When he finished washing his hair, Issei slightly widened his eyes as he began to feel various strange things. It was a feeling similar to when she had discovered her demon powers after reincarnating. Although this time, it was just a strange thing. Do I smell honey? Issei wondered, completely puzzled by the situation. His confusion increased even more when he could smell a rather strong mint smell coming from outside the bathroom. In fact, it was so strong that he felt a small aura being drawn in that direction. Mint. Wait a minute. It's exactly the same as when I saw Tiamat's aura, although now there's also that smell. A slight blush appeared on Issei's face. Wait a minute. Why is his presence so close? Issei's response was answered instantly when Tiamat opened the bathroom door. Luckily for her, she wasn't naked. She was wearing her white underwear. She fit her quite well, and she didn't seem to be tight-fitting. But because of her voluptuous body, her bra and panties fit her body a little too tightly. Do you mind if I take a bath with you? The dragon asked with her typical serious expression on her face. Issei just nodded with a small smile. It doesn't bother me. Tiamat looked at him with a small smile to see that his attitude changed. I see that this month has served enough for you to no longer be ashamed to see me half naked. She would comment the dragon, sitting on top of Issei to enter the shower, because she was very small. Changing the subject, I think my body is undergoing a strange change. Now I can feel your aura, and various scents. Issei would comment, caressing and washing Tiamat's hair, making the dragon close her eyes with satisfaction. Perhaps it was because he was too focused on the new changes he was undergoing, and for that very reason he did not realize that Tiamat's soft, creamy skin was in contact with his. 
but Tiamat was not exempt from such information. It is a peculiarity of dragons to track other dragons. Only my kind can use said power. This process sooner or later would occur in your body, and most likely it came so early thanks to the fact that now your body has a special arm. He would answer Tiamat, wrapping his legs around Issei's and resting his back on the chestnut chest with great satisfaction. Tracking only works if the dragon is using a ridiculous amount of power, oh if they're relatively close as well. I see, so dragon powers. Issei would answer, imagining how many powers a dragon could have. First the dragon shot, and now this, the brunette would wander so much in her thoughts, that she acted completely on instinct as he wrapped his hands around Tiamat's abdomen and rested his chin on the dragon's head. A small blush shoots across Tiamat's face as she felt the sudden contact, but she was not bothered by it. In fact, quite the opposite. A small smile appeared on his face as he leaned even more into Issei's embrace and joined her hands with the chestnuts, in a very affectionate gesture, to the point of being loving. He acted so nervous before, and now he seems like a completely different person, most likely, he had problems with perversion before to get so nervous. Another option could be that he's a full-fledged virgin, but we wouldn't be in this position if that was the case. The memory of when Issei accidentally hit his butt flew into his mind, making him look down, feeling how his hips were perfectly positioned in the delicate place for the brunette. I wonder, if that perversion would wake up now. Would feeling his member squeeze my butt feel even better than it did that time? After thinking about that situation, hum, Issei snapped out of his thoughts, and started sniffing like a dog. What is that? It smells like lemon. Issei wondered out loud with a raised eyebrow. Hearing Issei's words, Tiamat blinked in disbelief and quickly stopped squeezing her thighs. Smell of lemon? Asked the dragon with confusion. Issei blinked in confusion. No. I think I got it wrong. I'm still new to this smell thing, she commented, rubbing her hair in embarrassment. I think we should leave now, Tiamat would say, rising from his new favorite seat. This time, I'll make dinner. I'd like to practice the things you've taught me. The dragon finished, giving her a sidelong look. Issei could see her small smile, making him stand up instantly. In that case, I'll go buy the products from you, Issei commented getting out of the bathtub quickly and closing the sliding door. Tiamat only stared at the door for a few seconds, until finally she brought her hand to her intimate area, giving it a little squeeze and then raising her hand again. She watched her hand carefully, as if she was searching for something. If you looked at it with the naked eye, you could only see small drops of water. But looking deeper, you could see a strange thin slimy thread connecting his index finger to his middle finger. I can't believe I got turned on by something stupid, the dragon thought with a slight frown, looking at the fluid with a bit of revulsion. Until she finally dropped the token. Wait, when was the last time I got turned on? The dragon wondered in great surprise. Line jump. Tiamat's meal had been a success. Even Issei was very surprised that he could reach a level almost as high as him, being the first time he had worked with said ingredients. Thanks to that, Issei could see a huge grateful smile from the dragon, which indicated how grateful she was for his words. Still, all good things always come to an end. For the first time in a month, the two of them sleep separately, since it was not necessary to sleep together since the climate in the residence was perfect. Issei slept in her usual bed, while Tiamat borrowed her parents' bedroom. After spending a whole month sleeping with Issei, it was quite difficult for her to fall asleep in such a big bed. He just, he felt empty. And that feeling of emptiness, is what made him have nightmares. Ellipsis. I don't know what the hell you're thinking, but you better stop following me. You misunderstood things from the beginning, I only helped you because you hurt me. I'm warning you, you better not follow me anymore. I have a woman by my side. I'm not going to cheat on her, especially if it's someone like you. This is goodbye, and I hope I never see your face again, crazy. Don't make me regret saving you even more. Goodbye. Those were Diedrag's words that were carved into the ground as a farewell message entirely befitting of his pedantic attitude when he was still alive. Those words were not only engraved on the earth, but also in the heart of Tiamat. She remembered those words in her dream, and could only cry out when she saw how a crimson dragon was flying high up. She didn't know why, but her wings didn't work, she didn't respond to him. She couldn't reach it. After that day, 
she was sure that love was a term that should stay out of her life forever. First, someone who cheats on her, and then someone who abandons her. After that, they kill her mother and all her friends in the war, except for Tannen. That emptiness in her heart only increased greatly. She knew that she was to blame for not having been there for them, but the hatred that she felt towards Diedre at that moment blinded her completely, and she simply blamed it on the celestial dragon. All her misfortunes were due to that foolish dragon. Without realizing it, Tiamat woke up and gave a great cry. He quickly looked around, to see that he was in Issei's parents' room. His heavy breathing and sweating were clear arguments of what he had been dreaming that night. She put both hands to her abdomen, in an attempt to stop that agonizing emptiness that she felt in the pit of her stomach, which was so strong that it gave her the impression that the inside of her was going to tear into a thousand pieces, different pieces. It was a completely unbearable feeling. Even so, the serious look continued to be in force on Tiamat's face. No matter what she dreamed, she had sworn that she would never cry again, and she would swallow all those horrible feelings to keep her promise. In any case, her impassive face was torn apart by the melancholic look that adorned her beautiful light blue eyes, which were now being consumed by sadness. Still, she wouldn't cry. Tiamat. Issei burst into the room, completely alarmed after hearing Tiamat's scream. The dragon was in her underwear, but she didn't care in the slightest. What she cared about in these moments was the agitation that her best friend had, added to the great sweating and the look full of sadness that adorned her face. He quickly went to her and sat on the edge of the bed, looking at her with great concern. What happened? Tiamat didn't answer his question, she simply hugged him tightly, causing the brunette to widen her eyes in surprise. Still, it didn't take me long to hug him back. Issei's embrace was so warm and strong that it began to absorb all the negative feelings from Tiamat's body. Quickly, that heartbreaking feeling of emptiness had transformed into a warm and rather cute feeling. She felt great and she didn't understand how Issei had managed to cure her discomfort so quickly. I'll sleep with you today. If you want, of course. Issei commented, stroking her hair to reassure her even more. Hearing those words, Tiamat hugged Issei even more tightly, burying her face in the chestnut's chest as she nodded. Finally, they both went to bed in their underwear. Ah, neither of them cared about that detail, they just wanted to feel comfortable with the other. Sleep without any problems. After several minutes, Issei managed to fall asleep, still holding a firm hug on Tiamat's body. The dragon just watched him in silence for several seconds, feeling how his body was completely connected to hers as usual, although this time with much less clothing. Still, she had her mind working on other things. As I said before, you are a dragon of light, Tiamat would delicately place her hand on Issei's cheek. A smile full of love and affection adorned Tiamat's face for the first time, while he did not take his eyes off her. You are my dragon of light, because you managed to light up my world in just one month. When I was so depressed and so hurt, completely devastated by pain, you came to lift me up. When I am with you, I feel like my head smells miles high when I was a puzzle, you came to put me back together. Tiamat joined her nose with Issei's, while he began to rub her cheek with caresses full of love. As you said when we first met, life is a drink, and love is a drug. I had taken the wrong ones and was completely devastated, but you offered me the right ones in those first three days, and now I don't have enough. You covered me with your beautiful white wings when I was so depressed. Tiamat closed her eyes deeply and brought her body even closer to Issei's, her lips were practically touching because of that action. You make me feel so drunk and drugged. So high, so high. I promise I'll help you in any way I can. Not only for helping me and showing me a better path, but also for allowing me to feel what a healthy and true love is. Just when she was about to seal her lips with Issei's, memories flooded her head. She. You covered me with your beautiful white wings when I was so depressed. Tiamat closed her eyes deeply and brought her body even closer to Issei's, their lips were practically touching by that action. You make me feel so drunk and drugged. So high, so high. I promise I'll help you in any way I can. Not only for helping me and showing me a better path, but also for allowing me to feel what a healthy and true love is. Just when he was about to seal his lips with Issei's, memories flooded his head. You covered me with your beautiful white wings when I was so depressed. 
Tiamat closed her eyes deeply and brought her body even closer to Issei's, their lips were practically touching by that action. You make me feel so drunk and drugged. So high. So high. I promise I'll help you in any way I can. Not only for helping me and showing me a better path, but also for allowing me to feel what a healthy and true love is. Just when he was about to seal his lips with Issei's, memories flooded his head. Nobody will want her. She's a crazy deranged woman whose only good thing is her breasts and her butt. Don't come near me again. Goodbye. She abruptly separated her face from Issei's, having a somewhat sad look on her face. No. You've helped me so much. You've become my best friend, and I wouldn't want us to part just because of my feelings. She would deeply close her eyes while a small smile appreciates on her face. It's okay like that. She thought that, but a voice inside her constantly repeated. How long is he going to be fine like this? Although that little voice in his mind was tormenting him, it wasn't loud enough for him not to sleep with a small smile on his face. After everything she had lived through, having the man she loved by her side, someone as good as Issei, she didn't care if they didn't have that intimate relationship that she wanted so much right now. She just wanted to have him by her side, and keep laughing with him. That's all she wanted. He wanted to be with his dragon of light. Line jump. Hyodo, Hyodo. Hearing an unknown voice, both of them quickly sat up on the bed. Tiamat covered Issei, while he threatened with an outstretched hand towards the Alvin woman. Graphia watched as they were both in their underwear, though she didn't seem to mind. Sorry to interrupt, but it's almost time. Oh, it's the servant woman, Issei would exclaim, recognizing the woman. It didn't take long for her to blush as she finally realized that she was in her underwear, due to the woman's words. My name is Graphia, Mr. Hyodo. The woman would comment, making a small bow. I'll wait for you outside the room. Don't forget to take the pamphlet I gave you the first time we met. Issei just nodded, even embarrassed by the situation she was in. Finally, both Issei and Tiamat got dressed without saying a word. The tension in the air due to nerves was almost palpable. I guess I'll be leaving now. Issei would comment, keeping the pamphlet in her pants. Tiamat couldn't believe that he always used his academy clothes for everything, but this was no time to ask why he did so. Do you have something to tell me before you go? Tiamat asked, crossing her arms when she saw the serious and indecisive look in Issei's eyes, something that was never seen in him. Issei would lower his head in a bit of regret. Well, I... Issei raised his head with a nervous smile. Do you think I can stop Razor with just three minutes? Tiamat would turn her back on him, looking seriously out the window while still folding her arms. Taking down an enemy that has such a skill will be very difficult at your current level. She would answer the dragon, making Issei lower his head from her sadly. But, Issei would look up at her again in surprise, to see how Tiamat turned around to give him a big smile. I believe in you, she finished, putting a hand on her shoulder to comfort him. Issei's surprise was replaced by a small smile. What am I worrying about? Issei would wonder aloud, walking towards the door. He stopped as he took the doorknob, to take one. Last look at Tiamat, I promise not to let you down. He exclaimed with a big grin between his teeth. Tiamat smiled back at him, giving him the last parting words. Good luck. Line jump. Hi. Issei's scream made everyone turn around, looking with great surprise at the boy who had shown up giving the door a strong kick, which practically ripped it off with a blow. Her gauntlet was active, staring down at the betrothed who had yet to take her vow. The Grimori entourage smiled at this, knowing that it would come at some point. Rias could only stare at him in great surprise, while Razor seemed to start getting angry at what was happening at his wedding. What does this mean? Razor yelled, pointing at his subordinates. What are you waiting for? End the nuisance. Razor looked at his entourage in great surprise when he didn't move from his seat, causing him to clench his teeth. Quote dot dot dot, are you challenging me? It's not that, Razor. Razor watched as the Demon King placed his hand on top of his shoulder. What does this mean, Sirzex? Have you already forgotten that anyone could crash the wedding? Sirzex would ask, with his condescending smile ever present on his face. Razor would blink in surprise, then start to laugh cautiously, finally bursting into laughter. Not even the nobles had the courage to crash this wedding, and you tell me that stupid brat is going to do it. 
It's obvious that he's a complete fool. Razor would exclaim, finally finishing laughing. Brother. Rias exclaimed, being stopped by Razor. Very well. You will be my last flame before I become a married man. I just warn you that I won't be as benevolent as last time. You did interrupt my wedding, after all. Razor would comment with a smirk on his face, making Issei smile internally. First part of the plan successful. The battle will take place in one of the official raiding game arenas. You can use everything in your favor, as long as it's no more than two items. The fight will end when the opponent goes unconscious, surrenders, oh die. Razor laughed at Sirzek's words. I don't need items to polish the floor with a low-class devil. Issei walked towards the stairs, until he was in front of Razor. I'm wondering the same. She commented with a small smile, making Razor visibly upset by this. Was she calling him a low-class devil? Oh him. Wait. Issei. Rias would exclaim with great concern causing the brunette to give her a look. Don't worry, President. I'll finish this in three minutes. After saying those words, both Razor and Issei disappeared through a magic circle created by the Demon King. As soon as they disappeared, Rhea's worried look twisted into a smirk as she looked at her brother. Good job. Sirzex would mutter, placing his hand on top of his sister's head, causing Rhea's smile to grow. I can't wait to see those two idiots tear each other apart. Rias thought. Line jump. Issei looked around to see how he was standing on a huge piece of land that looked like a chessboard, although said pieces were separated and many of them were in terrible condition. He quickly focused when he saw Razor appear a few meters away from him. Issei earnest his gaze instantly. For starters, promotion, bishop. A huge bishop piece would appear in front of him, disappearing in an instant. Razor looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Are you dumb? Do you know well that the promotion to queen strengthens all your stats, while the bishop only improves your power and magic reserves? A small smile shot across Issei's face. Yes. I know very well that the promotion to queen can give you other benefits, but the power is distributed. Instead, the bishop only concentrates on everything related to magic. Razor lightly gritted his teeth upon hearing her. Explanation. Are you saying that you only need to improve your magic to win against me? Issei replied with a bold smile on her face, making Razor start to get really annoyed. Are you ready to start yet? The Demon King's voice echoed through the room, causing both of them to nod. So, get started. Razor clenched his fists tightly and shouted with great force, causing a small blizzard to rise up around him. He was soon surrounded by a thin yellow aura that gave off power. What do you think, brat? When I said that I would have no benevolence, I meant that I would use my full power from the start. Whoa. Lord Razor plans to use his full power. Don't you think he's exaggerating? He's fighting a low-class devil. I'll sweep the floor with it in less than 10 seconds, I'm sure. All the voices that were heard only made Razor's smug smile grow even more. Don't worry. I'll make sure to control myself so you don't end up dying. Issei was just looking at him seriously, making Razor raise an eyebrow. What's wrong? The cat got your tongue. A smile would shoot across Issei's face. Are you finished? Because I would also like to go with all my power. Razor would have a small twitch in his eyebrow. Do what you want. Anyway, everything you do will be completely in vain. Issei would clench his fists tightly as he gave her one last mocking look. How much confidence? How easy will it be to break it? Issei's gaze was completely transformed to a perfectly blended one. Razor listened as Issei's fists clenched even more, making him pay real attention to him. Nothing I do will help. He sure is a reincarnated devil if he thinks he'll be able to take on someone like Great Razor. He's an idiot. The good thing is that he will receive what he deserves, and he will finally understand not to get involved in such important things. For now, let's see what a ridiculous thing he's about to do. The countdown begins, partner. Everyone in the audience was shocked to hear Diedrag's voice. Issei stretched his arms towards the ground with great force and finished with a huge shout to the sky. Oh ah. Razor soon covered his face from the huge blizzard that had been generated while he watched in complete astonishment as a crimson aura completely surrounded Issei's body. The chestnut's serious look was easily distinguishable through the huge whirlwind of wind and the red aura that had been generated because of him. His eyes turned green for a second. His left foot flickered crimson, 
revealing strong blood-red armor in its place. The next thing to change was his head, which was covered by a crimson helmet. Then, his arms were also covered by the same armor. Before the performance ended, his legs were completely encircled by the crimson armor, causing the huge blizzard around him to intensify a bit more. To end the party, a gem appeared in the middle of his chest, to then blink green and materialize all the armor in the sector of his torso, finishing the transformation and causing a large red flash to completely blind Razor, along with the huge blizzard that had intensified even more, if that was possible. The audience was seeing the screen completely red because of the brunette's aura, making his jaws tremble at what they were witnessing. Without warning, the huge crimson glow dissipated along with the blizzard, making Razor finally able to see Issei. When he saw her figure, her eyes couldn't help but tremble in shock. Welsh Dragon. Balance Breaker. Balance Breaker. Rias exclaimed, shouted, completely shocked by what she was witnessing. Sirzex just smirked at his sister's reaction. This is better than I expected. Sirzex would think, a mysterious smile on his face as he stared at the Sekariote. Razor could only continue to stare at him unable to say a word. He was completely transfixed by what was happening in front of him. That threatening and suffocating crimson aura that Issei gave off didn't help in the slightest either. Issei's helmet would dematerialize, giving him a look that was identical to Tiamat's when she was angry, oh trying to assert herself. He had learned very well from his teacher. The only thing that Razor could think of was to smile forcefully. So much fuss just to put on that armor. Razor would comment, getting into attack position. You'd better put your helmet back on. I add at the end, his look much more serious than normal. He didn't know why, but that suffocating aura, along with Issei's gaze was putting him in a very bad mood, so he wasn't going to hold back in the slightest. A small smile shot across Issei's face. The helmet. I won't need that to beat you. Hearing those words, Razor tightly gritted his teeth and trembled in anger. Tisk. Whatever you want. Don't blame me later when I smack your head off. Razor yelled fiercely, unfurling his phoenix wings to charge at Issei. Razor moved like a flash of light to where his enemy was, delivering a big punch to his face. Oh at least, that's what everyone expected. That, Razor thought blinking in complete shock as he saw how his fist had hit the air, as Issei had tilted his head to the side to dodge, seemingly with great ease. Issei's mild, penetrating, and serious expression only made this fact annoy Razor even more. Issei gave a small jump back and began to fly, crossing his arms while he was still suffocating him with his gaze and his aura. Razor just gritted his teeth and quickly followed, making numerous attacks that were aimed at the brunette's face with impressive speed. Issei dodged all the blows with great ease, swinging his body and ducking from one side to the other in the air, performing a great show of impressive movements, since he seemed to be dancing. The only thing Razor could do was clench his teeth more and more as he watched how Issei dodged all his attacks, having his arms crossed and that cursed look still on his face. After spending several seconds with the same result, Razor decided to break away from him a bit and tried to give him a strong downward side kick that would be impossible to dodge, since if Issei tried it he would split him in half. Oh that's what I thought. A great roar was heard when Issei stopped the kick that was going straight for his cheek with his forearm. It was a completely successful block, as his armor didn't even flinch from the impact. Razor could only stare at him in disbelief, unable to understand what was happening. But if you only started two months ago, how are you able to parry and dodge my attacks? Issei just remained silent, pulling Razor's leg off of him with a sharp movement of his arm, forcing the phoenix to compose itself. Even so, she didn't have time to rest, as a strong punch was fired towards her face, which she barely managed to dodge by stepping to the side. Without the audience being able to understand anything, the fight quickly turned in Issei's favor in less than a second, since he was throwing paws and punches left and right towards Razor's face that were being miraculously dodged. Razor gave a small, frustrated yell as he saw an opportunity to counter, but it was nullified by Issei as his fist collided heavily with his, causing both attacks to cancel each other out and create a very small shock wave at the center of the impact. Again, without anyone understanding anything, Razor and Issei began to collide all their punches, paws, and knees, creating small shock waves throughout the arena due to how fast they were moving. What's happening? I see them blurred by the speed. They're colliding all their attacks, 
cancelling each other out. It's impressive. How is it that a low-class devil can match the attack strength and speed of a high-class devil? I don't know, but I have to admit it's impressive. Sears X just laughed at the comments. Yes, even. Rias could only watch the shock waves with her eyes wide open, just like her entourage. They couldn't believe that Issei could be dealing with such a strong enemy, from his point of view. I don't get it. How can you keep up? I asked, yell Razor, at the limit of his patience. He couldn't believe that a low-class devil was facing him. Issei looked him straight in the eyes, causing Razor to widen his eyes a bit because of the look that the brown-haired man had kept throughout the fight. Your moves are very slow and weak, making it very easy to match them. Hearing Issei's explanation, Razor widened his eyes in great fury. His movements reached even greater speed, as did his strength. Seeing the drastic change, Issei flexed his back to avoid a punch that was going towards her face. Razor appeared in front of him, tightly clenching his fist. Try to match this. He yelled with great force, giving Issei a strong blow to the face that made everything around her tremble for a second. The chestnut's face was forced to turn to the side by the inertia produced by the blow, his eyes covered by his hair. The bloodthirsty smile that Razor possessed on his face indicated how cool he felt to land that blow. Without warning, yet another tremor was heard, which sounded even stronger than the last. Razor's smile instantly faded, and he slowly lowered his gaze to see how Issei had recovered without him even noticing her, giving him a strong blow to the abdomen that went through him completely. Razor could only open his bloody mouth in disbelief as he trembled in pain. He tried to fix the situation quickly, punching Issei in the face. Even so, he couldn't even finish raising his arm when Issei had already landed a huge punch in his jaw that sent him flying to the edge of the arena, crashing hard against the wall and making the already battered horse piece fall, collapsed completely on top of him. Issei just lowered his fist and began to slowly move towards where Razor was, because he knew that this wasn't over yet. A huge explosion of flames was released at the location as an orange magic circle appeared above the rubble. When the smoke and dust cleared, Razor could be seen standing up, breathing heavily. His body was already healing at an enormous speed, but even so he couldn't help but stagger and kneel on the ground, as he began to scream in silent pain. Those two blows had knocked out his stomach, knocked out half his spine, and shattered his jaw. In short, it was very painful. I I don't get it. I swept the floor with him last time. How did he improve so much in such a short time? He would think with great anger and frustration, the accumulation of said emotions was so great that they had already completely flooded his mind, and his eyes showed it clearly. I don't care if you're the Sekariote, I'll kill you for this humiliation. He would end his thoughts, watching with great hatred as Issei was a couple of meters away from him. Razor's eyes widened as they couldn't when Issei's figure became a blur to his eyes. He instinctively rolled to the side to avoid Issei's kick that went straight for his chin. Still lying on the floor, Razor stared at him, clenching his teeth tightly as he trembled in disbelief. Razor didn't waste time and got up quickly to try to shoot some kicks that went straight to Issei's face, but the brown-haired man blocked them with his forearm practically without getting annoyed one bit. After a few seconds of the same thing, the brown-haired man flexed his leg back and charged with all his might, screaming at the end as he delivered a strong kick to Razor's face that made him spit out a large amount of blood. As if that wasn't enough, Razor ended up swallowing a large amount of the ground as he was dragged several meters by the momentum of the blow leaving a line of destruction behind him. Issei just pulled himself together and looked at him carefully. Razor began to get up from the ground with some difficulty as a large amount of fire surrounded his face, which was healed after a second. The phoenix recovered without much trouble, although his slightly irregular breathing and his hateful gaze indicated that he was mentally unstable. This is over. Razor yelled with great force, rising into the air, and raising his right hand in Issei's direction causing a small ball of fire to begin to be created in his hand. In a few seconds, three large magic circles were created in front of his hand. A few murmurs began to be created in the audience. Will he use that attack? It's Lord Razor's second best attack, the boy will end up very badly injured, oh even killed. It's a pity, it had great potential. Now that I think about it, it's normal for him to have such potential if we're talking about Sekiryote himself. It doesn't matter if he's low class. You're right, brother. 
Rias pulled at Sirzek's clothes, to be surprised when he saw that her brother's face was still impassive as usual, forcing her to look at the screen to know what she was waiting for. I don't care if you are the Sekariote, you must pay for your insolence. Razor yelled at the end, causing a small but powerful fireball to shoot out from his hand, which turned a golden color as he passed through the three magic circles, indicating that there was a lot of concentrated magic. The attack was so fast that he left a bright trail behind him. Razor's maniacal grin didn't waver for a second, while Issei still crossed his arms, holding that look on his face. The attack covered the trajectory in less than a second, and when everyone believed that Issei was about to be defeated, the exact opposite happened. Issei raised his hand and deflected the attack towards the sky like nothing, making everyone completely speechless by the action. It only took a few seconds for Razor to speak. Quote dot dot dot. How? How did you become so strong in just a month? How did you learn to fight so well in such a short time? Razor waited for a few seconds for an answer that never came, since Issei just continued to stare at him with that impassive and suffocating gaze that infuriated Razor to its peak, causing him to squeeze his eyes shut and grit his teeth. Say something. The scream was so loud that even Razor's sister herself was surprised, as she had never seen her brother lose his temper in such a way. Razor's eyes widened and he began to gasp for air, not only from the scream, but also from the large amount of magical reserves he had spent to launch the previous attack. He continued to look at Issei, who didn't seem to want to say a word. But just as he was about to yell again, Issei opened his mouth. Ellipsis. 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 If you don't give up, I'll kill you. Quote ellipsis quote. They were just a few words. But those words, it was enough to make something inside Razor shake him completely. Something changed inside him. Those were his feelings of hate, anger and frustration that he felt because of that dragon boy. Those feelings were replaced, changed, by one in particular. And that was, panic. Razor's face turned into a completely terrified one when he heard Issei's words. The expression on his face was impossible to imitate, it was utterly icy, cutting terror. That feeling was the real hell. He wanted to get rid of it. As soon as possible, Razor rose even higher into the air, his completely horrified face still palpable on his face as he stared at Issei in great terror. Razor raised both of his hands to the sky, starting to create a huge ball of fire. I can't lose. I can't die. Razor thought desperately, putting an immense amount of his magical reserves into the attack. About three magic circles reappeared, but this time they spread out all the way he had to take to get to Issei. Ah, he subconsciously began to scream due to the large energy charge he was using to prepare the attack. The great ball of fire was getting bigger and bigger, to the point of being completely gigantic. The magnitude of the attack is immeasurable, it will kill him. Hum, it seems to have made Lord Razor angry. Otherwise, I wouldn't use that attack. Now he won't have a chance. He can't dodge it and it's multiple times stronger than the previous attack. It was a good fight. Brother. Rias asked uneasily as she saw the huge ball of fire that didn't seem to stop growing. Sirzex's features were faltering for the first time in the entire fight. Will he spend all that amount of magic power in one attack? I didn't expect this. Damn it, the griffin won't be able to save him with such a magnitude of explosion, he'll die with it. What the hell are you thinking, Razor? You know well that he must not die. When Sirzex tightly clenched her arms with her hands, that's when Rias realized that things stopped going as planned. Die you fucking reincarnate demon of fuck. Razor yelled at the top of his lungs, throwing the gigantic ball towards Issei. Issei observed with his impassive gaze how the ball with about 20 meters in diameter approached his position, going through the magic circles, becoming more and more yellow for it. When it was only a few meters away from touching the ground, all the debris shot out in various directions, out of the enormous pressure generated by the attack. Sirzex gritted his teeth slightly. It's over, and we haven't even started the plan. Sirzex looked away, unwilling to watch all of his wonderful plans slipping away. When the attack was only a meter away from Issei, the brunette raised his right hand. Dragon shot. He yelled with great force at the end, causing a crimson beam much smaller in size than Razor's attack to crash into the gigantic ball stopping its advance in its tracks, and it didn't take long to move towards Razor's direction. All, even Razor himself, they widened their eyes in complete shock at what they were witnessing. 
Practically, Issei had unleashed an attack with just a second of preparation and was besting the mini sun that Razor had thrown in a heartbeat. No, Razor yelled, completely desperate as he spewed a small amount of flames towards the attack to regain control, but the attack continued to slowly move towards his direction. Quote dot dot dot. Impossible. This can't be happening. Razor would say, completely terrified, creating a large magic circle that served as a barrier, in a poor attempt to fend off the attack. Both magical attacks hit the barrier and shattered it in less than a second. This can't be happening ga. A completely blinding light illuminated Razor's figure, so that nothing of him could be seen later, since he was completely locked inside the attack. A second after that, the brilliance surrounding the entire arena wavered for a second, only to expand into a huge golden explosion edged with crimson. The bang was so loud that it managed to be completely deafening. A large whirlpool had been generated around the shock wave, which was in charge of destroying all the chess pieces that were in the arena with the help of the same explosion. When the magnitude of the attack finally stopped expanding due to the containment barriers, which Sirzex himself had placed in advance, he shrank and disappeared out of nowhere. Some murmurs began to be heard from the audience, completely incredulous at what their own eyes had just seen. When the dust began to clear, everyone stared intently at the screen, creating a huge silence in the place, which quickly turned into groans from shocked people. Issei would be standing in the middle of the arena, with his helmet on. His armor would be severely damaged, but even so he hadn't let his wearer take any damage. After a second, the armor self regenerated and Issei's helmet dematerialized. Partner, we have 20 seconds. Okay. Issei would nod seriously. It's time to move on to the third phase. What do you plan to do to win? Diedrag asked, genuinely intrigued. A small smile appeared on Issei's face. The first thing Tiamat taught me, faint. If that fails, I'll be sure to save some dragon shot for last. I see. Sounds promising. Diedrag would reply with an excited tone in his voice. He couldn't wait to see what his mate would do, though he really already knew because he could read his mind. Their talk ended just when Issei managed to distinguish between the dust as a large amount of fire settled in front of him. After a few seconds, Razor's figure would start to become visible. He was kneeling on the ground, his eyes completely lost in the panic of the moment as his body trembled in terror. He wanted to finish it all fast, and he couldn't do it. Droplets of sweat ran down his face, while the slight gasps of exhaustion were present in the environment, added to the groans of pain that were heard coming out of the middle. That magical aura that was around him had completely disappeared, indicating that he had almost no tricks left up his sleeve. Issei didn't waste his valuable time and positioned himself in front of Razor in a quick movement, causing the blonde to get very visibly alarmed and get up to try to deal a desperate blow to the brunette, which he missed for obvious reasons. Then he tried to hit him with another punch that Issei dodged very easily, causing a small smile to appear on the brunette when he saw how Razor's blows already lacked technique, and were just desperate measures to escape from his oppression. Issei wasted no time, and approached him with that smile still on his face, making Razor's eyes widen in horror. Issei flexed his right arm and charged with all his might in an obvious attack, making Razor look at his prominent punch in advance. It's too obvious. Razor yelled taking cover on the left side of him and leaving his right side fully exposed. Issei's smile grew even more when I gave him a hard left to the side of his ribs, causing him to spit up a large amount of blood and go flying, finally ending up rolling on the floor. Razor got up with some ease, though his trembling never left his body. The wound that he had in the middle sona of his torso ended up healing, raising his gaze again to see Issei. But when he did, he could only blink in disbelief as he was in front of him again, charging another punch just like the previous one. This time you won't fool me with your ridiculous feint, Razor thought, covering the left side of him with one hand and the right with the other. Although his reaction had been correct, he could not withstand the enormous pressure exerted by Issei's fist, so his forearm ended up giving out with a horrible crack, while he was expelled at great speed by the force of the attack. As he flew into the sky this time, the only thing that stopped him was Sirzex's barriers, as the battlefield had been left completely deserted for obvious reasons. Razor's body fell with a thud, which was completely broken as the sound of something breaking into a thousand pieces reached everyone's ears. Time's up. Diedrag would warn with a slight note of concern in his voice. 
Issei would be reeling from the balance breaker breaking, as the loss of power hit him abruptly. Shit. He cursed himself. I should have prepared some boost beforehand on my gauntlet so the difference isn't that big. Issei would think as he leaned on his knee, but it was too late to think about it. The crimson energy that surrounded Issei would end up completely fading away. The only thing that hadn't disappeared from her armor was her gauntlet. Razor began to get up with difficulty, due to the pain he was feeling right now. The smile on his face was indescribable. What happened? That power lasted so little. Razor's smile would completely fade as his vision became somewhat blurry, and he ended up falling to his knees because of it. Issei widened his eyes at the sight. The mental exhaustion. This is my chance. He exclaimed, extending his hand towards Razor as a small ball started to get bigger and bigger in his hand. Are you going to throw it at me from 30 meters away? Your attack is very strong, but it's useless if you don't hit your target. Ha 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 ha. Razor would laugh out loud as he tried to stand up fully. Finally, the crimson ball managed to be big enough to fit into his palm. If it's that easy, then dodge it. Dragon shot. Razor watched the attack with a smirk on his face, but his expression turned into a complete puzzle as he started to move. Quote dot dot dot. Wa what's wrong? He would wonder, staring at her legs in great horror. I I can't move them. Razor raised his hand and spent the last of his magic to counter the attack. Issei widened his eyes in shock as another huge ball of fire materialized in his hands, but considerably smaller in size than the last. She still had that much magic. Unlike his previous attack, the fireball covered its path in less than a second, impacting heavily against the dragon shot considerably weaker than the previous one, narrowly winning the clash and causing both attacks to explode very close to Issei so it was inevitable that he would receive some damage from the explosion. It could only be seen how he covered his face in vain, to then give a small cry of pain, being enveloped by the edge of the explosion. Razor stared at the small curtain of dust while gasping for breath. He was completely exhausted. Razor gritted his teeth and fell to his knees, clutching his head tightly as he felt that everything around him was completely blurred, added to the enormous pain that still persisted in his ribs on the right side. Wait a minute. They weren't healed yet. Razor quickly looked at the stinging area, to widen his eyes in complete shock when he saw blood dripping from the wound caused by his broken ribs, and there was no flame covering him to heal him. Razor stood up with great difficulty, staggering from side to side while clutching his ribs with a look of horror and pain on his face. He only hoped that this child was unconscious, because he did not want this torment to last another second. When he finally got to the spot, his eyes widened when he saw Issei down on his knees. His shirt in tatters, and his pants a bit battered. His skin was visibly damaged, but it wasn't serious. In his hand the gauntlet just materialized, implying that that little glove had managed to absorb the greatest amount of impact. Issei looked up, causing Razor to take a step back unconsciously. This ends now. It was Issei's simple words that made Razor clench his teeth tightly. Issei charged at Razor with a yell charging his punch exactly like the last two times he did. Seeing this, Razor widened his eyes wide. Now, you don't possess the strength you had before. She yelled with a big smile on her face, catching Issei's right fist with difficulty, since her strength was still even. Issei charged his left arm towards Razor's abdomen, being dodged by a millimeter thanks to the blonde's anticipation. I told you I wouldn't fall for your ridiculous feints anymore. Razor would yell with great force, beginning to direct his fist to go straight for Issei's throat. I win. But what are you saying? Razor was slightly startled when he saw Issei's steely gaze. You already lost when you let despair flood your mind and heart. Razor blinked in complete shock when he felt that his attack was stopped by Issei's hand when he took his forearm, to then feel how the brunette opened his fist and strongly affirmed the grip with Razor's other hand that had previously blocked him. At that moment, Everything went silent and everything started to go very slowly. Issei's eyes could only visualize Razor's figure in front of him. Everything around was black. He was looking at Razor, specifically at his chin. A loud deafening roar broke the silence. That loud and devastating roar had been caused when Issei's knee impacted Razor's chin with devastating force. Time had completely stopped right at that precise moment, seeing it from different angles. All of that, just for everyone to see the magnitude of what that blow meant. 
The knee replayed itself over and over and over again in the reader's mind from different angles, until finally everything began to slow down again. The mouths of the entire audience were wide open, they couldn't believe their eyes. Since everything was going much slower, the figure of Razor spitting out a large amount of blood with his eyes rolled back was easily distinguishable. Meanwhile, Issei was still in the air just like Razor, her knee still bent, her view completely covered by her hair. Finally, she looked up from her with great seriousness, to see how Razor's body was still falling slowly, about to touch the ground. Taking down an enemy that has such a skill will be very difficult at your current level. Ellipsis. Ellipsis. But, Issei's eyes locked on the moment when Razor's head began to skim the ground. I believe in you. The first sound that would be heard in that long silence, would be Razor's body landing on the ground, dragging himself like a sack of garbage for a few meters, until his face fell to the side, denoting his blank eyes. Issei would finally land, looking intently at Razor. Quote ellipsis quote. Quote ellipsis quote. Quote ellipsis quote. Our Razor Phoenix has been knocked unconscious. The winner is Hyodo Issei. He would exclaim the Demon King, declaring the end of the battle. After those words, another overwhelming silence followed. Hearing that, Issei raised his gaze to the sky, letting his arms fall to his sides. Why do I feel this way? Issei would close his eyes with great tranquility. I just won a battle against a strong guy. It was just a successful rematch against someone who had humiliated me. I only did it for the president. At that moment, it was when Tiamat's words returned to his head. If you find that moment, Issei would raise his gauntlet to the sky, and squeeze it with great force. You will be completely fascinated by the true meaning of combat. P-E-R-F-E-C-T-O-O-O-O-O. Issei would scream with great force and shake his fist with great passion, to get rid of all the fabulous emotions that were completely overwhelming his mind. Hearing her scream, Rias would tremble with excitement, as she had broken free from the arranged marriage. Whoa. He's beaten Razor. Who is that guy? I have no idea, but it seems to be the wielder of the Welsh dragon. A large amount of muttering and shouting began to be heard from all the demons in the room, except for Razor's entourage who quickly went to help him. Issei was forced to stop his celebration when he was teleported into the room, making him look in front of him out of obligation when he saw that all of Rhea's entourage quickly approached him, giving him different compliments and congratulations for how he had acted, making him a big toothy smile was drawn on Issei's face while a slight blush shot up on his face at the words of his friends, and at how Kaneko caressed his hair with a hint of admiration on her face. It's been amazing dragon boy. Oh I should tell you Issei. Sirzex would approach him, clapping for his victory along with his sister, who greeted him with a big hug. Issei. I was really worried. Rias exclaimed, hugging him even tighter. Issei broke away from the hug, impressing those present. You don't have to be any more, now you're free to marry whoever you want. Exclaimed the chestnut with his thumb raised. The Grimori entourage looked at each other seriously for a minute, even Sirzex's face became a little serious. Seeing this, Issei looked at everyone in confusion. I said something wrong, he asked, seeing that everyone was looking at him strangely. Issei. Let's go talk outside. Sirzex would say, being accompanied by Rias. The Grimori entourage looked at each other seriously. I suppose Lord Sirzex will resort to Plan B. Akino would comment, giving a little tired sigh. For now, we shouldn't worry. Everything went according to plan, except for a few irregularities. Let Rias have a little trip with Issei, so they start to get closer. Kiba would just nod with a tired smile on his face. I just hope everything goes well. I wouldn't like to have to do certain things. Oh I wouldn't mind. Kaneko would comment, generating a magic circle at the feet of his friends. Oh me neither. She would conclude Asia with a mysterious smile on her face. Some demons looked at each other in confusion seeing how Issei had left along with Sirzex and his sister. That she is free to marry whoever she wants. Then why did he rescue her, knowing that he would be engaged to her if he did? The other fully muscled demon with purple eyes would bow his shoulders. I don't know. I'm not that close with my cousin. The subject would cross his arms with a defiant smile on his face. But that guy is most interesting. I hope we can talk soon. Line jump. I would like you to escort my sister to the academy. Escort. Wait. Sister. Issei blinked in disbelief at the end. Now that I remember, 
Grafia had told me about this, Issei would conclude, rubbing his chin. Sirzex would laugh at Issei's carefree attitude. My name is Sirzex Lucifer. I hope we get along. Her brother and Rias would say, tilting her hand and being immediately shaken by Issei. I'm wondering the same. I answer the chestnut with a smile. Just as they finished introducing themselves, something flashed brightly in Issei's right pocket, causing him to gasp in surprise as a strange bird appeared between him and Rias. By this I meant escorting her. Sirzex would comment, resting a hand on the griffin. I hope you take good care of her. Brother. Rias would exclaim with a blush on her face, causing Issei to look at her with confusion and her brother to laugh at her. In the end, they both got on the tap and raised their hand in a great farewell, disappearing into the reddish sky of hell. When there was finally no trace of them, Sirzex lowered his hand, and a gloomy smile adorned his face. It's time to try the first step. Rias would think with an evil smile on her face that Issei didn't see, since he was looking straight ahead. Knowing what Issei's attitude is like, I'm sure a correct first step is to use some of my skills. After all, I don't think. Issei has changed that much in just a month. Rias hugged his bare back tightly, causing his slightly exposed cleavage to rub against Issei's rough skin from the recent battle. In a way, Rias was right. It's very difficult for Issei to change all that perverted attitude in a month. What she didn't know, is that her body looked like a board, when compared to the well-exercised and voluptuous body of a certain dragon, which she had the chance to see naked, every day thanks to the natural hot springs. Somehow, that mysterious dragon had served as a remedy to control that side of Issei to a great extent. That, and thanks to her new mentality, she was allowed to face that one dark side that she had in her heart. Rias blinked in great surprise when Issei seemed unfazed by her action. Even so, he didn't have time to get angry, as something came to mind thanks to his earlier thought. Hey, Issei, where have you been the whole month before? Issei looked over his shoulders to answer him. I was training in the familiar kingdom. Rias was visibly shocked by the revelation. But, if we look for you they're everywhere. Well, everywhere, except for the place where a monster lives that would be able to tear you apart in less than a second. A monster? Issei asked with his eyes rolling. Well, in a way, that idea is not very far-fetched. She would think. Yeah. Rias nodded. It is not known what kind of monster it is, since no one survived to tell about it. All those who tried to discover what was happening in that area ended up disappearing without leaving any trace. Before Rias could continue with his conversation, he was able to observe how Issei spoke through a small magic circle in his ear. You can teleport me, I also want to see you, and thank you. Issei gave Rias a quick embarrassed look. I'm sorry, President, I must leave her alone. I know I promised, but, that person helped me too much, and it would be very cruel and ungrateful of me to make her wait. Before Rias could ask who it was, Issei disappeared in a light blue magic circle and caused the girl to fall towards the front, since she didn't have the support of Issei's back. Make it. Rias frowned noting that the word meant much more than it seemed. I'd better tell my brother about this. It seems that someone will have to go back to the academy alone. Line jump. As soon as he appeared in the cave, Issei felt how soft and delicate arms completely surrounded him, enclosing him in a deep hug. The next thing he felt, was how the neckline that stood out over an unbuttoned shirt pressed tightly against his chest, feeling great warmth in that small triangle that was exposed, causing him to blush almost immediately. Even so, he was much more focused on returning the hug. Congratulations! Tiamat exclaimed with great enthusiasm. He was so happy that even the little canine fangs of his decided to make an appearance. How do you know? Issei asked in great surprise, breaking away from the embrace a bit to see Tiamat's beautiful smiling face. Tiamat gave him a small tap on the forehead as she laughed. Remember that we can feel what the other feels, silly. So you know how I felt when I won, right? Tiamat nodded with a smile. Yes, yes, you've finally met that courage you lack to get caught up in the feeling of what a battle is. It's exactly the same feeling as mine when I go into a fight, no matter who my opponent is. Quote, I guess you've rubbed off a thing or two on me. Issei would add as they both kept laughing. I wasn't the one who gave you the idea to replace your demon arm with a dragon's. Tiamat would exclaim between laughs, until he finally came up with something important. Wait a minute, 
Do you feel something strange in your arm? Tiamat would ask seriously, touching Issei's arm with both hands, looking for some part that was out of place. Not because. Issei asked with great intrigue due to the sudden change of attitude that her best friend and future lover presented. As I said before, a dragon's power is very corrosive. When you use it, there can also be serious consequences. Even so, it seems you're fine. Tiamat would conclude. His look would twist to a more tender one while her touches began to transform into caresses, causing Issei to be surprised by the act. You have given your arm to save your mistress. She must be a very good woman for you to have decided to give away a part of your body to rescue her. Tiamat's gaze would twist to a more delicate one as she continued to caress her arm. It must be great to have someone who really appreciates you so much. If it were up to you, I would give up my other arm. Tiamat looked up from her, visibly shocked by what she had heard. And if that's not enough, I'd also give up both my legs. And then my right eye, I guess. At these moments, Tiamat's feelings and emotions were racing so fast that they were impossible to describe. He just, he just needed to kick them out somewhere, somewhere, or he would explode. And for that very reason, Issei was getting a big kiss on his forehead from Tiamat. Issei could only blush and feel how his heart was shaking uncontrollably for something stupid like a kiss on the forehead was. But he couldn't help but think that he felt very, special. After a few seconds, Tiamat separated from Issei and gave him a big smile. That's very nice of you, but I won't let you give away parts of your body to save me. In any case, I'll be the one to save you. Tiamat would conclude, positioning both hands on Issei's cheeks in a very affectionate way. I won't be after you forever. Issei exclaimed with a smile on her face, standing up suddenly and causing Tiamat to be surprised. I made a bet that I'd beat you, and I plan to win it. Hum. Tiamat would say with an amused tone in his voice as he straightened up. I'll have to see that with my own eyes. But for now, I'll make sure you learn many other basic techniques that we put aside because of your meager magic, and they're very important. With your new power, I'm sure you'll be able to master them. Take it for granted, Issei would exclaim, clenching her fist tightly with conviction. Tiamat's determined expression would transform into a smirk. But before that, you have to make up all the classes you missed throughout all these days, you know what I mean. Tiamat would ask, pulling out Issei's black briefcase that was behind a stone. Seeing the briefcase, Issei began to sweat profusely as a poker face dominated his expression, instantly turning completely white. Tiamat waved the briefcase close to her face, further increasing her smirk. You know, right. End of chapter.